Hey gang, Jackalair here. I uh, just wanted to show you guys a kind of cool game that was tipped off to by uh, the host of Weekend Confirmed, a podcast that's hosted at shacknews.com. Uh, it's hosted by Garnet Lee and Jeff Kanata. They're the two main hosts there most of the time. And uh, talk about all kinds of video games from both inside the industry and outside. Kind of an interesting look uh, if you were ever a fan of uh, 1UP. It's kind of the successor now that 1UP has collapsed. But this is Card Hunter. And as you can see, we are in uh, Card Huntria. And we've got this uh, giant map here. And if you are a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, or have ever played that game at any point in time, then this is probably going to be a game that you're going to like. It takes a lot of influences from the old uh, proper Dungeons and Dragons, and a little bit from uh, advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, there are different places that we can go. This is my icon to show where I am and we can go, you can see I've been doing some adventures today. I'm really low level, but uh, let me kind of go here to, so that you can get the, see the aesthetic of it. So the costumes, uh, basically what it is is that these are, if you ever played old D&D, &D, there were little like cardboard cutouts that you wedged into little plastic bases and those were your characters. Uh, kind of like I think Candyland did the same thing. But we've got, this is the one that uh, we started with, and then he was my warrior dude, and then at some point along the line they showed me how to do it, so they gave me free pizza. Now the the go running joke is that there's gold, which is you use to buy things in-game, like in the, in the game inside the game, and then there are pizza slices, which you use to buy stuff kind of outside of the game. So for instance, if you wanted uh, the the sweet Valkyrie here uh, for your little logo, you would need to purchase that with pizza, which pizza you actually pay money for. Now, I, I know a lot of you just went, oh man, but it doesn't stop the game in any way. At least not so far that I've found. Now, and then of course I've got, so I've got uh, Zilok, my warrior here, I've got Sydney, my uh, elven wizard, and then I've got uh, Hyliag, my dwarven priest. And you can kind of customize them. As you'll see, there are different items here. Let's go to the store so you can kind of see what we're looking at. Now, the they do leveling and character growth in an interesting way. So as you level, you get access to more slots of things. So you start off the game and your warrior has uh, you know, two weapon slots and a shield slot. And then he gets a boot slot. And then he gets armor slot. And then he gets the martial skill, which I haven't yet bought. And now, as you see, the cards are moving down there. This is a sin kind of a mix between D&D &D and a card game. So what we're doing is, is we're taking a look and these are the martial skills that I can buy and they give me different things that I can do. Now if I hit spacebar, it widens these and shows this to what's happened. Okay, so this is a trait card. Impaler. So add plus one damage to penetrating melee attacks and I would get these two cards in my deck which are penetrating cut. Penetrating means that they go through armor. So, not through shields though. And you can kind of take a look and say, okay, well, you know, this one's got Bruiser, I do two damage to Bash, Weak Strike, Simple Bash, Why? Untrained Gouging, Backstabbing Bite, I'm not very good with Backstabbing, uh, so I am just going to go with the Novice Gouging, because currently I'm using a Spear and a Sword, which give me a bunch of Stabby Stabs. So we'll go with Novice Gouging, we'll put it there. And now those cards are added to my deck. <coughs> All of the characters work this way. Uh, so see, we've got the wizard, we've got... These are the things that, that her staff allows her to do. Uh, these are the things that her arcane items allow her to do. So as you see, I'm very zappy zap. Because 
all of the fire spells I've found so far are in a cone. And for any of you who have ever played D&D, you know that firing things in a cone is kind of iffy most times. Alright, so, and we've got a bunch of different things there. We've also got the the priest, and this is their experience. We've got it over here. I can't highlight things. Let me turn on the pretend mouse. Ugh, that's huge. But, so here, we've got the weapon, we've got armor, we've got boots, we've got a magical weapon, and then we've got, or I think these are medical weapons, but we've got experience, and the bar up here, we've got her level, and her health. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that back off, because that's kind of freaky. Alright, so let's go to an adventure. Now there's also there's the story of the adventures going on. There's also the story of the players of the game going on. Uh, which hopefully we'll see. Now we're going to this is my first level 4 adventure the Ruby Demon Portal so I'm probably going to get my butt handed to me uh, because these were easy enough these were kind of easy Highway of Robbery uh, I actually lost at least one person per fight so we'll see how it goes. Oh there's also the the tavern which you can see it's a level one tavern so you can recruit level one people from it there's also the keep on the hinterlands where you can access your collection because you can have more than the three characters in the party just they sit on the sidelines so if you want another instead of a human warrior you want a dwarven warrior all of a sudden or whatever then you can go ahead and do that. Now let's go to the Ruby Demon Portal. And then this will and load. Now. And here is Gary. And Gary is our friend. He is the, the DM. As a horde of misshapen demons pours forth in a never-ending tide from the yawning abyss of pure terror. And then it's got this nice little module uh, Card Hunter Official Adventure Module, DP1. Uh, the Wizard Aloizo sends you warning of the Demon Portal's magical gateway. And it's got all the cool tasks. It's for level for level 4 to 5, 4 diabolic battles. And you can venture forth and you just click Begin Adventure. You could pass... <laughs> could you pass the cheesy chips, please? And Jack Lair, which is, of course is my uh, character name. And then there's more uh, flavor text here letting you know what's going on. And, of course, the little pictures. And I just love the detail. Now, here's the battle. And this is where if if any of you were like, ah, it doesn't look much like D&D, &D, now it does. So... It's as if the very gates of hell itself have opened. Turn back, foul demon spawn. We're going to continue, because we don't care. Now, so you'll see that cards populated down here, and each of these shows little glowing things. So this will show where I can hit or where these take effects. So, for instance, the weak block, if you'll see these little green lines here, anything that shoots me from those green lines... And that's uh, taking into account line of sight, because these boulders block line of sight. But it's letting me know that that green thing will take effect there. We've got an uh, unreliable block, which it, you'll see the little dice down at the corner. Triggers on a roll of six or more. That means that when the, d when the dice roll happens, it has to roll six or higher, and it blocks the entire damage. The weak block uh, will block anything with four or less damage, but you have to roll a three or more. So this one blocks less damage, but a higher chance. This one has a ridiculously low chance, but it blocks the entire thing. Okay, so over here we've got fire imps, and we've got arcane imps. So this should be fairly interesting. Now, the way that it works, and there are two groups here. So groups share a hand. So if they play uh, a walk, they both get to walk. If they play... Uh, run, they both get to run, but they share a hand. So if you use things that have them get rid of things from their hand, it works to your advantage. Now, I have four cards each, 
and essentially you just take turns you and the DM play back and forth and back and forth. There's a multiplayer component to it, but I haven't gotten into it yet. So let's start out uh, just with... Uh, nobody can really do anything. See, I got two characters that have absolutely no attacks, so we're just kind of... we're just gonna walk out. Reveal all magic cards in your hand. Take two arcane damage from each card revealed this way. Ouch. Oh, it did it to them. Oof. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So my wizard is going to be the only one that can actually do some decent damage. So I'm going to have to walk and dash her out where she can actually zap some people, and I've got enough damage to where I can take down that guy. Okay, so we're going to start out by just kind of walking right over here. And that gives me line of sight, so of course it also gives them line of spite, so they've got flame spit. Hooray! <laughs> they're going to do damage to my poor little mage. Now, of course, my poor little mage is one shy for the second spell. Yeah. And it kind of progresses like this back and forth. Now, we're going to have... Go ahead and cast the Righteous Friendly. Oh, no valid targets. That ah, figures. Alright, so we're going to use our move, we're going to dash up one more, and then he's going to use Flame Spit, but our armor reduced that. So if you saw that, he's got Reliable Armor, it will lower the at incoming attack by one if he rolls a one or higher. So Reliable Hide Armor is really awesome, because it does that every, every round. So we're going to do our Penetrating Zap, one of those, and then it goes up there. Now up here it shows how many stars I need and how many stars Gary needs to get rid of everything from the playing field. Now we're going to go ahead and run him over here, because I know that these... That guy's going to be dead probably pretty soon. Can I put? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can do that. It's not going to do anything because it only lasts one round. Ugh. And whenever you attack, it also automatically turns you to face your last attacker, which becomes important later on. Okay, so I can use another Righteous Frenzy, but it wouldn't do me any good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass. Now, passing, if we pass, if I pass and he passes, which he just did, then we all have to discard down to at least two cards. So I need to get rid of one of these. I'm going to get rid of the unreliable block, because I've never gotten that thing to work. And we're going to process here. Now they're taking their damage from last round, and then we're going back up to full to get the full cards. Alright, so we've got some new cards in here. Once again, my warrior not getting any attack cards at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. We're just going to run him right up in front of somebody, because he's got all kinds of defensive cards. And then we're going to take a look at our health. Okay... Everybody's doing kind of okay. Daddy. We're going to start out with Daddy. a penetrating zap over there. Let's see if we can get that guy to move, which he did. Now this one's a cone attack, so that will be interesting. And then move him. Oh, let's go ahead and move him right there. I just itched my nose on camera. Sorry. A devastating spark. Oh no, hard to block, too. Who's he shooting? Oh, he's shooting Z. That's not good. 
Alright, so my armor blocked it. So my armor blocked some more. Alright, so we're good there. So now I've got this force cone. Never used it before. It's a new card. It's a cone, and it's going to slide back one. That's kind of cool. So we'll go ahead and use that. Just for giggles. I can only get one guy right now, but it's going to hit him for some damage, and it's going to push him back. So it pushes him back one. Alright, so the minor heal heals two. We'll go ahead and use that on the warrior. And we're going to walk over here. Dwarves, uh, by the way, the let me explain the moves here in a minute. Once we get them back. Okay, he has to discard two. Uh, we're going to get rid of the weak armor. And the weak block. And then we're going to get rid of Righteous Frenzy. Because that's done nothing for me. Okay, so there are different moves in the game. I wonder if everybody's going to take damage from the fire. Alright, so there we got some attacks showing up. We got Fire Bolt. This is what they're burning me with. And that's just not cool. And I have no way to heal her. Which means she may be disappearing soon. Alright, so the movements. Humans always start with run. Elves always start with dash. Uh, dwarves always start with walk. And then depending on what equipment you equip, you'll have other movement abilities in your deck. So we're going to go ahead and let's see. We're going to go with the penitent snap. Short spark. And she's gone. Alright, my turn to play. So, let's run up to dude. And now that he is near me, we can put some good whomping on. Of course, he's going to run away. And so we're going to walk right around the corner here. We've got a flame spell, but I'm not really too concerned. Because believe it or not, I am currently winning. So we're gonna... Alright, so they are gone. So the fire imps are gone. Now it's just the arcane imps uh, that we've got to deal with. I'm gonna hang on to that. Uh, I can't use that attack, so we're going to pass. He's going to pass. We have to discard one card. I'm going to discard the attack card. Because I have lots of those left. I know I do because I got none of them the first couple rounds. Alright, so I lowered that attack to one. We're going to go ahead and use a Righteous Frenzy on him. And what we're going to try to do is draw out that run card. Because what I don't want to do is the card that I just put on him gives him plus two damage to all attacks this round. What I don't want him to do is run away. So I want to make this guy run away. So we're going to run up here. Boom. And then he moved. Okay. So we're going to have just enough to kill that guy if we can get to him. Which we can't. Because Goober just stepped right there. So we're going to come up here and we're going to womp on this guy. Oh, we did have enough. Oh, yeah, that's right. Plus two per attack for a total of ten. I can't do math. All right. So we're good there. We pass. Uh, discarding cards. Uh, we're going to get rid of Simple Strike because the Wavering Faith, I believe. Yeah.
yeah, discards their oldest card. Which, when you're only drawing two cards, can be pretty deadly. Alright, we're gonna walk over here. I don't remember if that tile is... He's kind of being a jerk about line of sight, but... And then we're going to do healing presence on him, and that'll heal everybody around him in an adjacent square. So this is kind of the idea of the game. I mean, it does progress on here, and we're waiting for me to discard something, but it'll go round by round, and there will be different things that'll happen in each round. So once again, I got no attack cards. How is that even possible? Discard a card. So now he is kind of stuck. But I can walk up here. And then I can give him the almighty chop. How? And he's gone. Victory! And then onward. Now here is one of the uh, nefarious things: is that all right? N and N's are always uh, either chocolate or peanut. This bowl now seems to have just peanut N and N's. How curious! And those are M and M's, in case you don't know. But and more flavor text, more pictures, all done in that beautiful art style. Now we collect the loot, the all important loot. So here's the stuff that I've collected. We open open the chest and here is the club reward now you can subscribe to this game and get the club reward as well uh, I'm not because I'm cheap uh, and I got an uncommon shield which does missile block and flimsy block uh, this one actually does unbelievable block and weak block so I'm actually gonna flip that out because I get shot by stuff a lot and then I've got an axe that's a novice hatchet, so that's for a priest. I think that's what I'm already using. Yes, it is. Okay, so we put everything in here. We say take all and continue huh. on. Uh, I've been reading in the Card Hunter Compendium about the Neo Yugto. Uh, I think it's kind of like an angry trash can. <laughs> and from a, a lot of these jokes, you would have to have. I mean, there are some pretty. Uh, uh, deep level stuff in here that goes over just D&D &D from years gone by. <clears throat> There's a long article in this month's uh, Mauve Manticore magazine. Of course, uh, not the Red Dragon magazine. Uh, Melvin had a published letter. Melvin is his older brother who is the one that keeps telling him that he is horrible and that we're playing the game wrong. Which, if you had an older brother and you play D&D &D and they play D&D, yeah, that's what they told you, that you were playing it wrong. So now there's another uh, Imp Frolics Unwholesomely Among the Bulls, several a bit Evil Green Glow, Acid Drifts in their town. So we're going to be fighting some acid stuff. And that's the basic premise of the game. Uh, now, like you saw in the previous thing, there's that the club reward. It shows up there. Okay, so this time we've got your skin crawls at the sight of foul demonic sigils carved into the trees here. Continue. Okay, so this time I actually got attacks. Ooh! Uh, of course, and the terrain is broken up to where there's there's stuff that you can't walk through, like the... You'll obviously see those to where when you look at walk that you just can't walk through. There are also difficult terrain, which are kind of like uh, walking through swamps, stuff like that. But uh, this is essentially the entire game uh, so far. I'll go ahead and update you guys uh, if I find anything else of uh, really interest. Uh, but this was just a fun game that I started playing. I've been playing it most of the day uh, in between doing chores. Uh, so that's it. 
thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on.